On December 10th, 2021, Tory Lanez dropped arguably one of his greatest bodies of work in Alone at Prom, an album that was slept on by the mainstream masses during its initial release, beloved by his fans such as myself and enthusiasts of the beloved 80s sound. Now nearly two years since the album's release, Alone at Prom has grown a cult-like following and fanfare that has almost taken on a life of its own. It further cements this project as truly being one, if not Tory Lane's magnum opus in his music career. Now, with the upcoming release of the highly anticipated Alone at Prom Deluxe coming out on November 17th, 2023, let's take a look back onto the project documenting the greatness that is Alone at Prom. But first, let's start with the man, the myth, the legend, Ashton Ray. No, sir. Nah, then I stop him. One more time. Gotta get that flooded right. He gonna get it, though. Stretch out the ending, the ending note. Tell him to stretch out the... There you go. Perfect. You stop turning me on. Feel like this all my night long. Turn them up a little bit more. It's gonna be right. I feel it. Loner at Sunset is what we going for. That's the name. So we going for Loner at Sunset. All right? That's the name. We're going for Loner at Sunset. All right? So basically that's what the that's what the song is going to be about most likely something along the lines. When I think of what do y'all think about when you hear Loner at Sunset that that title? When I make music the first thing I do is try to make sure that whatever I think about, whatever that shit makes me feel like that's what I'm aiming for. That's the that's like what I want to make the song about, that's what I want to make the top line about, that's what I want to make everything about, you know what I'm saying? So, that's what I think about, like, that's the first thing that I do when I'm, you know? Whatever the title is, I go off of that shit. So, that's what the song's gonna be called, we're gonna go with Alone, or Loner at Sunset. Alright, play, play, the, play the beat, put me in the booth, y'all ready? Let's go. And listen, as we make this song, I'm gonna ask y'all for suggestions, certain things, I'm gonna need y'all y'all uh, opinion on so i'm gonna come in and out of here and we're gonna make this song happen so this is the point when you need to tag a friend and tag somebody who you know that's creative to come help us all collectively create this fucking 80s song that we're about to create the first song from my actual 80s project is actually dropping tonight uh drops in two hours it's called lady of namic make sure y'all go look that shit up lady of namic it drops tonight um you ready yeah, yeah.
That's important. Do the, the melody before anything. Do the melody before anything. Try the melodies out. And then you add the verses. So hold on, one second. So all of this shit is going to sound like gibberish, right? And then what you do is play it. This thing, this is the dope part. It's the most important part. <laughs> so boom. So what you do right there, what I, at least what I do, is I listen to those those little melodies. All those little shits, those shits is important because what they end up being is the words. It's just a matter of the feeling first. That's why I'm, a lot of people like my music because they say it, it feels different. Because what I try to do is chase the feeling first and then I'll put the words down. The feeling always matters more than the words. You know what I'm saying? A nigga could say the dumbest shit. We've seen it a million times. You know what I'm saying? But the feeling you know what i'm saying is what's important according to tory lanes in a podcast interview he did with dj academics on off the record tory stated the creation and development of the album took place in los angeles during the pandemic in 2020 where he was not supposed to travel to at the time and made the album there within one week originally he said the album was seven songs long tory and his engineer super saiyan mike developed and finalized a song every day from Sunday to Sunday, and the last two songs added to the project and done at a different time, Ballad of a Bad Man, and 87 Stingray. Other than that, everything else was done within that week of recording, according to Lanes. Yeah, man, just throwing a the fake slow soul glow in my hair right now. Let your soul glow! Head ass nigga. Looking like. Ah, I wish I had this fucking head of hair in my life. <laughs> you bitch, stop playing with me. Mm -hmm. From now on, don't call me Tory Lane no more. My name is Ashton Rain. You heard that? Ashton Rain. Get my name right, bitch. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't fuck my shit up. Ashton Rain. Leave. Come out this bitch with the curls looking like Carlito. Stop playing with me. Now, outside of the music, there were an incident which occurred that ultimately casted a shadow over the project and the amazing streaks of projects that preceded it being Daystar, Playboy, and the new Toronto 3. But despite any obstacle, when all else fails, simply put, great music will always prevail. Insert Color Violet. <laughs> Without any playlisting from the music DSPs for Tory during that time period, around mid to late 2022, the fourth track off of Alone at Prom, The Color Violet, went viral on TikTok, becoming a sleeper hit to the mainstream of people who were not already in tune at the time. This resulted in the song reaching number 63 on the US Billboard Hot 100 and charting high in other countries as well, 
but most importantly, finally garnering the attention to not only the single, which was much deserved, but also bringing more eyes and ears to the body of work as a whole. Aside from the major hit that the color violet is and was, I think what shouldn't get lost on people regarding this album, I believe to me, showcased Tori's amazing songwriting and song making ability. On notable tracks such as Enchanted Waterfall, a interpolation of the famous Careless Whisper by George Michael, Hurt from Mercury. Lavender Sunflower. And a personal favorite among many, Pink Dolphin Sunset. And of course the color violet. Another skill set of Tory Lanez aside from his hook making and song making slash writing ability that is criminally underrated is his use of background vocals that complement and in many cases complete the song. So seamless at times they can almost go unnoticed. What matters is the backgrounds. You know what I'm saying? The backgrounds matter. Now in the 80s it was very important to put your oohs and your ahs, nigga, and shit that was very simple. It was like, nowadays, niggas got all kinds of backgrounds, you know what I'm saying? But it was very important to just have simple oohs and ahs. I'm going to put some oohs and ahs in the, in the, under the hook so that you can hear the actual hook go off and basically makes the hook sound bigger. So you want to stack your backgrounds when it comes to the oohs and the ahs. And also, I want some harmonies, too. Examples are songs like Pluto's Last Comet that samples Madonna's 1985 Into the Groove. Midnight's Interlude. And Last Kiss of Nebulon that samples Philip Bailey and Phil Collins' 1984 Easy Lover. A song like Pluto's Last Comet to me, I believe to be somewhat of a Michael Jackson inspired, at least vocally and in feeling, I can almost hear a track like this, now respectfully, being on an album the likes of Off The Wall with that kind of vibe. Lady of Namek. Now we can't talk about Alone at Prom without mentioning a large muse and contribution to the overall aesthetics and theme of the album. The beautiful Alexa Alita, who played the Lady of Namek, the love interest of Ashton Rain, and who will and always forever be in our hearts, the Lady of Namek. Rest in peace, Alexa. It's the third day of uh, shooting for the 80s. So it's just about putting continuous days in. It's really me coming up with a lot of the concepts and then Keaton bringing them to life. Mid coming here doing his creative direction, Stilo doing his work. And it's all coming together and everyone just kind of making it work. It's a bigger job for me because I'm not only styling myself, 
I'm styling myself, I'm styling the girls. You know what I'm saying? I'm making sure that the sets have a certain authenticity and just kind of create creative directing in my own way too while everybody else does their job as well. So. Ultimately, I feel Tory Lanez executed his approach and intended goal on capturing that 80s pop and R&B sound and feeling while putting that modern touch to it without it feeling cheesy and still having its originality and authenticity intact. Throughout the album, while giving a nod to a few classics from that era and adding his own twist to it in a classy manner. The goal of me making this documentary was to give one of my favorite artists, Tory Lanez, and his work, that is, Alone at Prom, the proper respect and flowers they deserve in present time, and not allow history to rewrite or not acknowledge the greatness that is Alone at Prom. Hopefully the deluxe dropping soon will be an extension of that greatness. Breaking news here, Ashton Rain, the iconic 80s star, has returned with a new album right after this commercial break. Ashton Rain, the iconic 80s star, has returned with Alone at Prom, the Deluxe. Now, if you enjoy content like this, let me know if you want to see more documentary style videos. And until next time, peace.